Okay, in this video I hope to explain to everybody what Polish FP5 filters are and why they're so useful. So, here is your typical GP5 or SHM62U to be technical. You know, the most famous gas mask, the most mass-produced gas mask or respirator in the world. About 100 million plus of these made, supposedly. Uh, but there's an issue, isn't there? It's that the Soviet green GP5 filters contain asbestos, which is very bad if you inhale it, can like screw your lungs up or kill you. Um, so, you know, lots of people want safe filters to put on these. Now, a lot of people just shove NATO filters on which won't make an airtight seal. Yes, you could do that, but what if you actually want to use the mask other than for cosplay purposes or something like that? Well, that's where FP5 filters come in or some of the other standardised Polish filters or normalised Polish filters made my mask pole. So this is a sealed FP5 filter. As you can see, it says FP5 on the front. Um, and it's foil wrapped, so while this one is expired, it apparently ran out in 2016, um, it should still work, I imagine, because it's only two years out of date, and it's foil wrapped. And here's the ones I've been demonstrating videos before. This isn't an FP5 filter, but this is one of Mask Pole's earlier standardised filters. So, what are standardised filters and how do they work and, you know, everything like that? So, I've said this before in other videos, but to recap, um, when Poland uh, obviously was free of communist interference, um, its own country again, after the fall of communism, you know, fall of Berlin Wall, fall of the Soviet Union, um, they had all this old Warsaw Pact military equipment, a lot like this, laying around. Now, Warsaw Pact masks use 40mm Gost thread for the filters, NATO uses 40mm NATO Stanag, they're not the same thread pitch and thickness, which means if you try and put a NATO filter on a Gost mask, it won't make an airtight seal. Now, Poland's dilemma was they had loads of these masks in storage that they could use for reservists and things like that, and it was a bit stupid to, you know, just throw them away. So they didn't want to do that, but they wanted to adopt NATO masks, and NATO masks take 40mm NATO, so they had this problem that they didn't want to be doing, you know, building two lots of filters. So what they came up with was is this single seat here, RD40, which just means 40mm NATO, but it says 1 7 inch, um, and that is to explain that the thread's a bit different in these. So they came up with a standardised or normalised filter. So what that means is that the filter's screw thread itself is sort of halfway between NATO and GOST, and it's designed to work with both sets of masks. So let's get this FP5 filter open. I might need to cut the foil with a knife if it doesn't tear open easily, but we'll see. Ah, no, it's tearing. Okay, so let's get this out of its wrapper. Here is an FP5 filter. So again, looks very similar to the packet information, not much there. See, it's got the mask pole thing there, if that's the right way around. Mask pole. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to open this filter, and we're going to put it on the mask, and we're going to test it. And in theory, it should work absolutely fine. Um, as I said, I've been using the older Polish filters than these for testing Soviet masks safely, and they work a treat. But as I said, the issue is you can't just simply, unfortunately, put NATO filters on Soviet masks because they have the Gost thread. So it's not just the Soviet masks, it's all the Warsaw Pact masks, so Polish masks, Czech masks, Hungarian masks, they all have 40mm um, Gost threads. So there we go. There's our filter, so let's open this up. Right, rubber washer's fallen out. That might be good to keep this as a spare. This is just goes on the top to keep the top nice and sealed, but you know, actually having these washers as spares would be useful. So okay, if we look at the screw thread, it looks like that. And what this should do is uh, you know, fit properly with one of these masks. So let's try this now. Now if this makes a good fit, I shouldn't have to force it at all, it should nice and easily screw in, like a Gost filter would. And, oh look, look at that, it's screwed in, screwed in nice and tight. Okay, so now we're going to do the test. Now, there are other options if you didn't want to get FP5 filters. For example, like the Czech and Polish um, MS4 filters, I believe they're called, um, they will fit Gost masks. Now people reckon they're a lot safer than the Soviet masks, but I've never seen an asbestos report on them. As I said, personally, I wouldn't use them just because there are completely safe alternatives like FP5 filters and other Polish standardised filters from after the Cold War that we know are going to be safe. Um, with those old filters, yeah, if you want to use them, use them. Um, just bear in mind that I don't think we've ever seen tests on them. 
Uh, they don't have that kind of cottony looking stuff that the Soviets have that had asbestos in. But at the same time, personally I wouldn't use them, but it's completely up to you. But there we go. This is an FP5 filter on a GP5. As you can see, it's a standard GP5, nothing special. So, now for the important bit, the test. What I'm going to do is first test it with banana oil, then we'll test it with air freshener. Now, because I've just opened the filter, I think this filter should work, but we also want to check the seal here. As I've demonstrated in other videos, obviously, NATO filters don't make an airtight seal there. So let's test this first of all. Okay, so I'm going to probably have to talk quite loudly so you can hear me, but as you can see, it's still the FP5 filter on here. Not a GP5 filter. These look a lot more like modern NATO filters, how they're set up. So there's the banana oil or the isomil acetate. Very strong smelling stuff. So first let's test the filter itself. Unsurprisingly, I can't smell that at all. Right now, let's check the seal here. Yep, I still can't smell it, so the seal seems to be good. So now we're going to do the air freshener in the room test, which is far less forgiving. But if the mask does that, then I can confirm to you that Polish FP5 filters should definitely make an airtight seal of the masks. As you know, I've already been saying this for a while, but now I've actually got MP5, sorry, FP5 filters in my MP5 mask. I thought it'd be good to actually demonstrate the filters themselves to prove to people they do actually work on the video. Right, hopefully I'm entirely in frame, so we're going to do our standard test now with one of these masks and filters, as you can see, air tight. Right, so... That should be totally covered in the spray. So now I'm going to check the time on my watch and give it a couple of minutes at least to uh, make sure this fully uh, gets into the air. And yeah, I can't smell anything. This is working absolutely perfectly. As I was saying, if you get an FP5 filter that's foil wrapped and everything like that, and it's only a couple of years out of date, the filter should be absolutely fine for real world use. Obviously, if you do really worry about filters um, for use, make sure you get ones that are in date. But I think for anybody casually wanting to use a GP5 for anything, an FP5 filter would work properly. Now, I'll see if I can find any documentation for it, but I'm pretty sure these FP5 filters are like standard NBC CBRN type deals. Um, you know, there is a label on there somewhere that's facing me, but we'll have a look at that. But as far as I'm aware, the previous generation before the FP5 was at least an ABE filter, so organic vapour, inorganic vapour and acidic gases. Uh, the FP5 filter, I believe, is at least an ABE filter if it's not an ABEC filter. Um, so if it's full ABEC filter, like a full decent CBRN filter should be, then it will um, obviously be able to uh, filter ammonia-based vapours as well. That's what the K stands for in the ABEC. But regardless, it will be an ABE filter at least. It's also a P3 filter at the bottom. Uh, that's the bottom section. So particulate level 3 protects you from biological weapons and radiological stuff like irradiated dust, things like that. Um, also if you're removing asbestos or like fiberglass from somewhere then this will work the same way as an asbestos remover's filter. So, you know, even when these totally expire, the P3 filter it's worth keeping these for, don't bin them because you can just have a P3 filter on the GB5 for housework. But yeah, um, there you go. I'm sure that's been at least two minutes now. Let me check my watch. Yep, that has been about two minutes. So, yes, the FP5 filter is still work working perfectly. Let me just uh, break the seal of the mask and see if I can smell room air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can smell uh, the air freshness straight away. So, yes, we have concluded that the um, FP5 filter works exactly as it should. So, it's 
quite clammy to my skin. But yeah, the FP5 filter worked absolutely perfectly on a GP5 as seen. If it works on a GP5, it will work on any other Soviet mask. So, yep, all comes down to that. A normalised screw thread, meaning it can screw in and out of a thing there. As I said, I was just seeing if it did say what the FP5 filter actually did on here, but it doesn't seem to. Um, what I'm going to do is just quickly check Mask Pole's website um, with Google Translator, unless they have an English page as well, and I'll see if I can just find a technical manual for these, if they are ABE or full ABEC, just for the people who are curious. But yeah, they are very good regardless, but let me just check if it's AB or ABEC. Okay, so thankfully MaskPoll has their site in English as well as Polish, so you can actually look at their products. Now, I couldn't find a thing annoyingly for the individual filter, but you can find the MP5 page and the MP6 with included filter, where it has some details of the filter. And it says these work against chemical weapons, radio radio radiological, biological threats, and toxic industrial chemicals, or toxic industrial substances. So, I'd be fairly certain, because they say it works against ticks or tims or whatever you want to call them, that ammonia is going to be included in that list. So yeah, as far as I'm aware, this is an ABEC P3 filter, um, like most mod military filters are, but annoyingly it doesn't have the letters on like some of Mars Pole's industrial filters do. For example, on these older ones, um, where else is it on the filter? Oh yeah, there we go. AB2E1P3. So it's an ABE P3 filter. This one, unfortunately, doesn't say that on there, but I'm pretty sure it's an ABEC P3 because they say it works against toxic industrial chemicals, ammonia being one of those. So, there you go. You've got your options if you're getting a um, Polish filter. You can either get these or these or any of other mask poles, 40mm standardised industrial ones. But yeah, regardless, uh, FP5 filters are probably the best way about going about it, really, because... You know, you can get them all sealed, foiled, wrapped for not too much money. And, you know, they're going to work on any of the GOST or NATO masks. So you only have to get this one filter if you had several masks and you wanted to put a working filter on several of them. This one filter would do the job. Um, and obviously, the main reason I like them is safe to use with Soviet masks. Nothing dodgy in them. Not even a question of, you know, anything dodgy in them. Unlike some of the other filters where it's still a bit, mm, use at your own risk. These um, are definitely safe. So if you want a link, I'll put one in the description below. Uh, B Store, who I bought the FP5 from, uh, sorry, the MP5, he included some FP5 filters with it. But he does have a page of just the foil wrapped FP5 filters if you want those. But as I said, they are very good because uh, the poles basically had to get a um, you know working filter for both the masks. So the Polish design was you had to have you know one that did both things. Where, um, as you know, it wasn't like they kept making sort of 40mm Gost and NATO filters separately. They combined them and this is the result. So, yep, FP5 filters definitely recommended. As said, there will be a link in the description to where you can get them on eBay. But they are definitely worth it if you've got an old Soviet or Warsaw packed mask and you want a filter you know to be safe and that will actually work with the mask. Rather than, you know, forcing a NATO filter on that won't make an airtight seal and damaging the threads in the mask. Just pop one of these on and it will work like a charm. So there you go. Polish FP5 filters, a great investment if you actually want a working filter for your Soviet masks.